Hey everyone, my name is Sam. Thanks for checking out this video. If you get to the end and liked it, subscribe, bell notification, give the video a thumbs up. Anyways, um, I'm I, I hope this ends up being alright. I was at Marshall, no, not Marshall's. Winners, winners. Yeah, it was winners the other day, and they had this like tripod stand thing for 40 bucks, so I grabbed it. So we're we're trying it out. Because if you were unaware beforehand, I just leaned my phone up against a tower of boxes and a candle so we'll see how this works um we are wrapping up february i can't believe how i feel like february actually went by pretty quickly yeah it feel like it just went super quick i know it's a shorter month but it just it just went by really quick but anyways um february is pretty good i didn't really do any impulse purchasing or anything like that but i picked up some books and i have read at least one of them and I'm finishing off series a lot and I'm really happy about that and um yeah so those are the books that I picked up in February. God I couldn't figure out what fell off I thought it was maybe the ring light first and having a proper like tripod and then I realized it was because I bothered to put makeup on and not earrings. Who does that? All right, first off, I picked up a copy of The Electric Kingdom by David Arnold. I am yet to read David Arnold's Mosquito Land though I hear people just rave about it all the time um but it is post-apocalyptic in uh new england i think it is but this main character is with her dog searching through oh my god wait i just realized if there's a dog if the dog dies in this oh no i just assume if there's a dog in a book it's gonna die and i'm gonna be sad oh no anyways the main character is like looking through to go through this portal and goes I'm assuming through the portal to uh, New England and uh, is trying to survive its, I just thought it was very timely with what's going on in the world. Um, the uh, end page is there on the front has this like weird, I don't know what the proper word is. Reminds me of those like bowls that people put like little plant display things in that have like a hole in this, you know what I mean? Um, there's nothing on that end page though, it's just dark blue. But yeah, and the under dust jacket is like a dark navy blue and then the spine is like a light baby blue uh, foil. So I am super excited to read this. Um, and it's a standalone so it's nothing like super big to be getting into. So this is what I got and I think it's on my March TBR, I'm pretty sure, yes it is. I also picked up a copy and read, since I purchased it, a copy of The Forever Sea by Joshua Philip Johnson. This is one of my most anticipated books of 2021 and I don't think I was disappointed. It's this like climate change fantasy where you're on like the ocean, this ocean as you can see there and the main character is on a ship when she finds out that her, um, I think it's her grandmother on her mother's side? I think it is, um, who was the captain of a ship that she was on before, but left um, for drama reasons. Um, but her grandmother just stepped off the wall, off the boat into the ocean. Everyone's like, is she dead? Like what, what happened? And it's this whole story. I also really like that it's um, like the Princess Bride and that someone is telling this story in the book. Someone is like, you think of the grandpa telling the son the story in the Princess Bride movie, you know? It's, I like that. I like when books do that for some reason. Maybe it is because it reminds me of The Princess Bride, which is just amazing. I don't know. But um, I really enjoyed this. I am definitely going to be picking up um, the sequel. It is supposed to be a trilogy. I think it is a little bit of a dense fantasy and it's not super, super high adventure fantasy, despite being on ships and thinking about pirates. So don't go into it thinking it's like Pirates of the Caribbean, Daughter of the Pirate King, uh, Quick Speed or anything like that. But if it's just an adult fantasy that you're interested in, this is one I would suggest actually. Um, and the uh, under dust jacket is just a blue and the spine is green and then the forever sea is in silver here and nothing on the end pages. I have been waiting to see these books in stores because I got burned a few times over the years when you're like, ooh, I like the new edition cover of these books and Amazon doesn't give it a new, it's not a new SBN, Amazon just updates the cover photo and then you order it and then it gives you the old covers and you're like, that's not what I ordered, man. That's 
that's not it. I was waiting for them to basically get rid of their old stock of the Graceling books before they got the new stuff in. And my bookstore finally got them in. I have read the race, the Graceling, the first three books. I'm yet to read Winter Keep because I don't know why the publisher did this because this is clearly a money grab but it worked. I'll give them props for that to recover these and then release a fourth book randomly years after. Um, I don't know why they didn't make them all into a hardcover box set with the new book in it. If they were at least like, I don't, we don't want to make a be, be available for single purchase hardcovers, then I, I could understand that at least because like the production, especially during COVID. But why would you recover books one, two, and three, and then only in paperback and then release book four only in hardcover right now? Because like it's, I am literally not buying the hardcover of Winter Key, which I do desperately want to read and I'll probably get it through the library because I don't have the patience to wait like a whole year for the paperback to come out. Um, why would you do that? You're basically delaying me giving you my money. But anyways, um, Graceling, a book one here. It's so pretty. It's all the same material except for the title has a little bit of like a uh, foily um, reflective, but it actually feels like it's the same texture. It's yeah, you know. So we have Graceling book one here. This is our spine. They, I love that they hired an actual illustrator because the first series covers. I read this book series. I had, I think, all three books in paperback. I got them off Book Outlet years ago and I enjoyed the books. I think I liked Fire the most. I'm fairly certain. It's not super fresh in my mind. I'll have to reread them. Um, but I didn't like the cover. So I was like, well, I'll just like buy the audio or like get it through the library if I want to reread them but I, I like these covers so I got them and then this is fire and they also recovered the UK I like those covers but I actually like the North American ones better it's like pinky ready freaking hair which I love you can probably tell and I also got bitter blue and all of the books have different POVs bitter blue character book two you know and I just, I'm so curious about Winter Keep. Like what made Kristen Kishore be like, I have this story in my mind that's not leaving, that I want to add into this series, which is very well known. It's a couple years um, out now and everyone thought it was done with book three. So I'm curious to see, you know, if it'll be worth it. Cause everything I've heard from people who read like Midnight Sun with the Twilight were like, was like, it was, why was this needed? Like, what was this? The same thing with Songbird of, or Song, What's the Hunger Games, the fourth book, where everyone was suddenly like, why? We were all, I was so excited. I was like, we're getting a Maggie book. And then they're like, here's the POV of the villain that y'all hated. And I was like, what? And everyone I know who read it was like, this wasn't necessary. This didn't add anything. This wasn't needed. This felt like maybe Susan Collins or the publishers needed money all of a sudden. And they just <laughs> went that way. So hopefully this is not that way. Um... And honestly, I would have read it really no matter what I thought of the rest of the Graceling books, even if I hadn't liked them, because I have read Jane Unlimited by this author, which is one of the wildest books ever. It's like a million different genre books. It's so weird and so odd. If you like those books, highly suggest Jane Unlimited. So um, I've not been disappointed by anything she's put out so far. So I'm excited to pick up Winter Keep when it comes out in paperback to match the rest of this series. I also picked up a copy of one of my other most anticipated books of the year, Hot British Boyfriend by Christy Boyce. I know it has like 3.5 or something like that on Goodreads and people weren't necessarily loving it saying it's tropey. I literally just wanted it honestly because of the cover. It gives me so much precious moment vibes and just makes me think of like childhood innocence and I like the premise that the main character gets like shot down like really publicly and it's like okay I'm going to England to run away from this and I mean like whatever happens with the dude happens with the dude it's also super short so I'm gonna be reading it I think in um April is my game plan um in the springy summer months that's when I'm interested in this stuff but honestly unless this book is wildly problematic like I just want to have those little cuties on my bookshelf you know I have almost picked up this book a few times and I put it on my Christmas list and so I didn't touch it for months being like if someone gives it to me no one ended up giving it to me for Christmas which y'all suck 
y'all suck no I'm kidding um so when my bookstore finally had it I was like deal finally so I finally picked up a heart so fierce and broken as well as the final book a vow so bold and deadly I know I trash Beauty and the Beast retellings a lot on this channel they are never ending uh I'm still waiting for one fucking book about Atlantis um and they will produce 20 books about Beauty and the Beast a year and it's exhausting um I generally don't read most of them with um honestly I think the only author that could really come out with something at this point like Beauty and the Beast retelling that I would read would maybe be Marissa Meyer and I think she's talked about doing that in the past I know she has her next book coming out as Rumpelstiltskin retelling and then we have all the Lunar Chronicles which I am kind of surprised that there is no like Beauty and the Beast in there because it is publishing um but I'm just kind of burnt out for the most part but we read um book one wait maybe I should get book one out hold on so we read A Curse So Dark and Lonely in the TBR and Beyond group oh it's gotta be like what two years ago now as a group read and even when this book came out it hit New York Times and I'm frustrated with Bloomsbury they wait like a year after a book comes out that hits New York Times to be like maybe you should release an audiobook 2020 and 2021 like what the fuck are y'all doing I know you have money you have Harry Potter why can't you get your shit together and release audiobooks at a reasonable time like what are you doing but anyways um I literally like still like I sat down I think in the bath like one night and just like blew through the second half of it and just like it's a genuinely well-written book it it does add things to it and I do like this flashing bef between world element I think it's just one of the exceptions to my hatred of Beauty and the Beast retellings. You know what I mean? Like I think I tried, was it Hunted or Sherwood, whatever one it was by Megan Spooner. I did not like that. I've tried a few of them, like never ended up finishing the books. They just, it's, none of them add anything to it. I'm like, I know where this is going. I get it. Like I've read this 14,000 times. What else are you offering me? So something else was offered in these books. Either the character was good, characters were good, which I did like them. The writing was really good. There is rep in here. Um, and I like this switching between our world and like this fairy tale world. I just thought it was really interesting and really well written. So I have been thinking like for over a year and a half being like, you should pick it up, you should pick it up, you should pick it up, you should pick it up. And then putting it on lists and just no one ever getting it for me. So I finally bit the bolt and was like, you know what, book three is out. You know they're not gonna do any recoverings, which is another thing that I'm trying to avoid. So you can have all three and this year your goals are to finish a series each month this can be one of them that you will finish this year and you know you liked book one despite all of the stuff it had working against it so we have book two and book three now and so and thank you for not recovering this bloomsbury um under dust jacket is black with a gold crown and then the spine is just the gold writing of the title and then the last book whoops under dust jacket has the red crown and then the spine with red. I also like that these books are fairly consistent in sizing. I don't know why but it genuinely bothers me when I'll read like book one of a series and it's like 500 pages and book two is like 450 pages and then book three is like 200 pages and I'm like so this was a duology that you split into three for money reasons right like what what is this? <laughs> I also picked up a red tigress I think this comes out on Tuesday yeah um because I, I didn't think anything of it I just saw it at the bookstore and I was like yes and I knew it was coming out and I thought maybe I just wasn't paying attention because it's it's hard to keep track um and oh maybe it was just on the bookshelf I live in Canada so it doesn't affect New York Times bestseller so I'm not honestly not that worried about it um end pages are yellow like a mustard yellow and the end the under dust jacket is red and I, I don't know if it'll show up on camera but there's like triangle diamonds like embossed into the into the cover on the front and the back and so yeah this is a sequel to blood air I really enjoyed blood air I this is the sequel to blood air I haven't read the summary of it I just know it's the sequel to blood air and I read blood air and liked it and wanted to keep reading the series which again it's been a rough like year and a half, two years almost at this point for me in YA fantasy. So when I find one that I'm like, yeah, I don't mind spending money on this to keep reading it, I do it. And then I got my package. Technically, I think it was my Christmas package, but my friend Muriel sent me my belated Christmas slash Valentine's Day box. And there were two books in it. One being book three of the Magical Misfits or Magic Misfits series by Neil Patrick Harris. I have all four books now. Yay, I had book one, two, and four. And I think someone in 
I was in an, I wasn't, I think it was this book. I put it on my Christmas list and whoever was my secret Santa for that year sent me this book two instead of book three, which I had requested. I already owned book two. So I was like, what do I do with this? I think I ended up giving it to the library. So, and then I was at Walmart and I saw book four. So I had books one, two, and four. And now I have book three. These books are freaking adorable. Just so adorable um, and really well uh, uh, like distributed cast in terms of diversity. There's a lot of different representations in here and I am super curious so now I can read book three and four and finish this series off. Um, we'll probably put that in later later part of 2021 because I'm really running out of months to finish book series because I just have so many started. And then it's like burnt orangey red with the heart. Um, the Magic Misfits, and then Volume 3, Theo, and they all have that kind of under dust jacket and um, end pages design. And this is just like such a really good series. I hope Neil Patrick Harris puts together another series. I know the dude seems super busy all the time, but really well written series and really enjoyable. So I will be finishing book, well, just this whole series and I'll read books three and four. I don't know, maybe like September-ish, I have to look and see what months I still have availability to finish series. At some point, I'm just gonna have to start doubling up, honestly, though. And my last book accumulated, it was arguably the book that I was most excited for on my Christmas wish list. And when I got stuff and it wasn't in them, I was like, mm -mm, where is it? Um, because I haven't seen it on sale and I'm, I just, it's expensive. It's for, it's an expensive, I guess I should just show it. <sighs> I finally got a copy of Bright Raven Skies. This is book three and the wrap up to the Sweet Black Wave series. Please more people read the Sweet Black Wave series. It is a Tristan and Isolde retelling. It is so freaking good. Again, to attest to it, there are no audiobooks available for this series and I just blew through it. I remember I sat down in, I think it was late December in 2019, I think it is, um, to read Sweet Black Waves because my friend, Haley? Someone, I think it was Haley, was like, yo, this is really good. And I read it and I think I started it uh, in the middle of the day. And I think I read like a couple chapters that day. And then the next day I sat down and just read the rest of it, like all of it in like one sitting, did nothing else that day. And if you know the story of Tristan and Isolde, you know what's gonna happen. Like, you know it's not gonna be a happy ending, okay? Like, they're Romeo and Juliet shit, right? Um, still was like torn to pieces, cried at the end of it. I was so angry that I had to wait for the next book. Then the next book, I read it in two days. I got the arc of it at a conference and I skipped out on a bunch of social shit at that conference so I could just go back to my room and finish the book. And I did in like literally two days whilst at a conference. So like, I want to read this so bad, so bad. This is in my April TBR. I'm getting that shit done. Honestly, may shove it into March if I have enough time. I just want to read this so bad. And I'm sad because I don't see anything else pending on Kristen Perez or KK Perez's um, Goodreads accounts for things coming out because this series was amazing. Like books one and two at least, unless book three is total trash, is amazing. It's so freaking good. So yeah. Um, I, I hadn't bought it for myself because it is $29.99 in Canada for a YA book. So I don't know what imprint is drinking, but like that's adult fantasy prices. I, I don't like I've it actually even for hardcovers, I there are literally especially anything from um, Orbit adult paperback fantasies in Canada from Orbit are like 25 bucks. So I don't know if they had a giant contract that they paid the author or what, but like $30 for a YA book is like pretty atrociously priced. So that's why I didn't buy it for forever. And I kept being like, hmm, why isn't there a sale? Why isn't there anything? But my beautiful, wonderful friend Muriel finally got it for me. Nothing on the end pages and the under dust jacket is this like deep red. I don't know why they did it like a red instead of an orange. Like there's a little bit of red, but even the red on the cover that blends into the orange and the yellow isn't the same red as the underdust jacket. I don't know, I just have a lot of questions about this whole series with this publisher. The books itself, fantastic. The whole design elements and the lack of audiobooks and all this stuff, not not super like favorable viewpoint for me on that. But anyways, 
I finally have it. And please, for the love of all that is holy, read Sweet Black Waves. I know the covers have Faceless Girl in a Dress. I hate those covers that are like that. I promise you, it is worth it. It is so good. So good. So good. I'm so excited to read this in April. <sighs> maybe I should, maybe I should kick something out of my March TBR and put this in. I don't know, I'll figure something out. Those are the books that I managed to accumulate this month. There's not too many of them, so I will link them in the description box down below. I will also link all of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back unless you have a super sketchy account. And um, yeah, that's, that's it. Stay inside, wear a mask, Black Lives Matter. Oh yeah, honestly, Asian Lives Matter. I keep seeing all this shit about people attacking Asian people. The fuck is wrong with people? I, I can't fathom. Anyways, on that super morbid note have a wonderful day i will see everyone next week probably for a wrap up of february reading <laughs>